Hey everybody and welcome to a brand new episode on the series Aretha Franklin, the Arista years. We follow the incredible career of Aretha Franklin in this time in the 80s where she made some of her best dance music and certainly some of her biggest hits and today is no exception because I have a question for you all. Who's zooming who? Well, I don't know who's zooming who, but uh, you can zoom me because I have a brand new soft light uh, because I couldn't stand uh, this uh, pixelized image that I was getting because it's winter here in Paris and, um, and it's so gray and dark. Even when I do my videos at noon, it's, it's like night. So today we are talking about this exciting album, the 1985 album produced in great part by Narada Michael Walden. And if any of you are fans of Diana Ross, like me, um, he's the one who produced the incredible Take Me Higher. And so today, Aretha, after having worked with Luther Vandross on uh, Get It Right, which was the album just before, which I don't talk about, she went and did her biggest selling album, one million copies, platinum status, tons of hits with the incredible Who's Zoom and Who. So let's dive right in. First of all, I love that album cover. Um, well, I love the pictures. I didn't like, you know, all the little characters around it. But this is the 1980s. That's why I put on this uh, little number. Um, I lived through the 80s. And so it's very funny because I can't really tell what is 1980s fashion as opposed to what is 90s fashion. But I guess because I was just there the whole time. And it wasn't my favorite, favorite time. I'm, you know... My year is 1978, Studio 54, Halston and Dancing the Night Away with Diana Ross, Grace Jones and Liza Minnelli. I mean, I was two years old, but I would have loved to do that. Um, first uh, of all, the first song, first single to come out of this album, Freeway of Love. And Aretha makes her very first MTV video where she's so cute and so adorable and she wins a Grammy. And this is her best-selling album since 1972 with the album Young, Gifted and Black. So this was for Aretha something huge. Now a lot of people say that Clive Davis only wanted hits, but I ask you the question, what else do you want for a superstar? Uh, you know, what else would you want for Diana Ross, for Donna Summer, for all of these stars? but hits because that's what makes them make better albums, more expensive albums, um, more concerts and, uh, and, and more appearances. If they don't sell, then, you know, the, the, they don't have the means to produce them. Uh, so of course, uh, Freeway of Love, huge hit. Uh, it hit number 10 in the Netherlands. It never went to number one, but it was really a big, big hit. The second song, which was, um, uh, Another Night, and it was also a single. So this is more Aretha-ish. It's a slower song. It's a love song. And uh, it's just so gorgeous and sexy. And um, there's a part where the song just stops and she says, My man, I don't need you to be bringing me down. Ha! And she rips off her coat and I go berserk. She did that on stage quite a few times. Sweet Bitter Love by Van McCoy much uh, softer, uh, much more deep, much more inside, if you understand what I mean. And it's just the perfect song to slow down the album just before the hit song, the titles track, Who's Zoomin' Who, written by Aretha Franklin. So she was really, really pushing to get new music, modern music, and a younger audience. But she's always had quite a young audience, I think. Uh, Who's Zoomin' Who, which means I've read all sorts of um, uh, descriptions, but it's generally when one person is interested in someone, but that other one is also interested in you. So, you know, we ask the question, who's Zoomin' Who? I don't... Everybody's zooming me. That's all I want to know. Uh, then that was, of course, a single because it was the title track. And then sisters are doing it for themselves. Really exciting video, which had a lot of airplay on MTV. And 
Aretha joins with the fabulous Annie Lennox as well as um, the Eurythmics, uh, which produced the entire album, as uh, Stewart did, uh, the entire song. Um, and so, of course, these two powerhouses, these two incredible voices, and uh, it's just a, an amazing song because you can tell that Annie Lennox uh, has more than admiration for Aretha. I mean, who wouldn't? But, you know, sometimes people just say, yeah, yeah, she's great, she's great. You can tell that this is someone that was a model for her, that she really, uh, you know, when she went into music and singing, really thought, you know, if I can give the emotion that Aretha Franklin does, and if I can do what she does, then, or, you know, close to, um, and you really, really feel that they are both uh, enjoying this, on the on the clip, uh, Aretha looks absolutely stunning, and uh, and she's just dancing her heart out, and she's just absolutely gorgeous. Until you say you love me, and ain't nobody ever loved you, are both two uh, songs. One of them, uh, ain't nobody ever loved you, was a single as well. Um, which are ballads. There's a little bit of Calypso uh, inspired music to it. Uh, very, very beautiful, very enjoyable. And uh, they are more than just filler songs, but this album is just jam packed with hits. And that's why it had so many singles at five in all. And uh, then a duet um, with Peter Wolf who has, he carries, he wears his name well because it's really that kind of a power and it's called Push. You've got to push harder to make it through the night. It's a stunning song. It has a bit of a rock edge to it with the electric guitars. And this is, as you know, the 80s, which I did not particularly care for. But because it is so soulish, uh, there's you know, it's there's dance to it, it's mellow, it moves, there's rhythm, and it's Aretha. So Aretha will never do anything that is not, you know, something that is completely soulful. And, um, and so it really moves towards, even though it's a bit of pop synth, towards R&B and, and pop music. And so it's uh, extremely enjoyable, but it's dance all the way. And then the last song is called Integrity. It is written by Aretha Franklin. And again, one of those message songs, uh, you know, what Aretha means, you know, she wants people to be just like that and integrity being themselves, being honest uh, and pure and, uh, and devout. And it's all about Aretha Franklin and she's just so, so, so amazing. And the more I listen to her music, um, the more I think what a legacy she has left to us. There's so much, so much. And that's why I wanted to um, really focus on one era, which is uh, Arista. Perhaps uh, we can do, you know, the other um, companies that she worked for, whether it be Columbia or Atlantic, or even once she left Arista and then was a little bit more independent. With this, I wish you the greatest holidays. Um, Christmas is coming soon and I will see you very, very soon with another amazing Aretha album. Bye-bye.